we are about to embark on the 10 most important days of the year. And indeed they are the best 10 days, the first 10 days of the month of Dhul Hijjah. Our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that there are no days of the year that are more beloved to Allah, that a person does good in those days than the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. And in fact, even more blessed than Ramadan. The most famous reference to these days is in Surah Al-Fajr, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالْفَجْرِ وَلَيَالٍ عَشْرِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by Al-Fajr, He swears by the dawn, and then He swears by these 10 nights. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes on to say, وَالشَّفْعِ وَالْوَتْرِ وَالْلَيْلِ إِذَا يَسْرِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by particularly the day of sacrifice, the 10th of Dhul Hijjah, as well as Al-Watr, which is the day, which is Arafah, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by the last part of the night. These 10 refer to the 10 of Dhul Hijjah. The best 10 days of the year are the 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. The best 10 nights of the year are the last 10 nights of Ramadan. And some scholars said, actually, the 10 days of Dhul Hijjah are superior to the last 10 of Ramadan, both the day and the night. In another hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, there are not any days of the year that are holier than these 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. There Therefore, increase in doing good deeds to Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the best time of those 10 days, which is al-shaf'i wal-watr, the 10th of the hijjah being the day of the sacrifice. And then of course, al-watr, the best day of the 10 days, the best day of the year, which is the day of Arafah. And so just like when we talk about Ramadan, where when Allah gives you a great opportunity and the good deeds are multiplied, the sins in those times are also multiplied. Be very careful not to do anything to deprive yourself of the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before you start thinking about the best good deeds to do. So the best good thing that you could do in the hijjah is to not sin and particularly to not harm anyone else because that's where the Prophet ﷺ specifically warned us. So then comes the question, which good deeds should we do? One of the best things you could do is to seek the forgiveness of Allah. We made all of these promises in Ramadan. We made all of these Ramadan resolutions and we definitely, you know, to some extent have miss some of it. The hijjah is close enough to Ramadan to where you still have an element of that where you can recapture it. And so if you are sad over what you missed in Ramadan, this is the best time to make tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The best time to repent to Allah. The best time to say, you know what, that obligation that I struggled with that I was going to start doing in Ramadan and I was not able to do so, I got weak. Let me try to do it again in the hijjah and let me try to make it permanent this time. This is the time if your Quran has collected dust or your Quran app has not been reopened since Ramadan, this is the time to say, you you know what, let me get back to my recitation of the Quran. The second good deed that we can do is to fast in these days. And fasting is a very blessed thing to do in any time of the year, but especially in this time of the year. Because the Prophet ﷺ said, fasting on the day of Arafat will be credited with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiving one's sins of the previous year and the following year. You're supposed to fast on the ninth of Dhul Hijjah, it will forgive your sins of the year before and the year after. The third thing that we can do is extra dhikr. Takbir, saying Allahu Akbar, and saying La ilaha illallah, and saying Alhamdulillah. So the Prophet ﷺ says, increase within these 10 days, saying La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Alhamdulillah, and SubhanAllah. My brothers and sisters, we must try to be charitable during these days. And the Prophet ﷺ says to us that there is no day in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sets free more souls from the fire than on the day of Arafah. On that day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala draws near to the earth in a way that befits him and he exhibits his, his benevolence and he remarks to the angels, he boasts to the angels, Ma ha'ula, what is it that these servants of mine desire when they're coming out to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? In this regard, the people are calling upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in different languages and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls the angels to bear witness that he has forgiven them. May Allah make us all amongst those that are forgiven. This is a day of dua. What is it to be found? within that dua? Well, first and foremost, a tawbah. And that's why the Prophet said it's the worst day of the year for shaitan. Shaitan has on his calendar marked the day of Arafah. It is the most humiliating day of the year for him. He tries to take you away from Allah. And on that one day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala draws you near. And all of the effects of shaitan, all of the sins that he stains you with, it is gone on that day in particular. The Prophet ﷺ taught us to spend the entirety of the day in calling upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until the sun sets, until Maghrib, every moment is precious on that day of Arafah. 
So what is the best dua of Arafah? The Prophet ﷺ made dua on the day of Arafah all the way from Zuhr to Maghrib without pause. And we don't have anything of his dua except for one. SubhanAllah. The Prophet ﷺ said, the best of what I and the Prophets have said on this day. So when Musa ﷺ stood before Allah on this day, when Ibrahim ﷺ stood before Allah on this day, when Muhammad ﷺ stood before Allah on this day, what did they say? لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك ولا الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير. None has the right to be worshipped Allah. He alone who has no partners, to him belongs the dominion of the heavens and the earth and all praise. And he has power over all things. Make sure that you say it at least a hundred times ta'ala, on that day. And the Eid of Dhul Hijjah is specifically a day of worship. And it is the second best day of the 10 days. So what is the ibadah of Eid al-Adha? What is the ibadah of the Eid of the sacrifice? Well, first and foremost, obviously the sacrifice itself sacrifice an animal for the sake of Allah and give some of the meat to the poor, we may use some of it and we may give some of it to family and friends. And this is called the udhiyah or the sacrifice. Now the udhiyah, some of the scholars say it is obligatory if you can afford it and others say it is recommended. Either way, why should you deprive yourself of this blessing? Every single Muslim who is capable of affording an animal should try his or her best to sacrifice an animal for the sake of Allah and distribute the meat to the poor. The Prophet wasallam said that whoever makes a sacrifice that Allah should Subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive the amount of sins on the hair of the animal, the amount of sins will be forgiven for you. And the Prophet ﷺ would make a sacrifice every single year at this time. The sacrifice should be made after Salatul Eid. It may be made on the 10th or 11th or 12th or 13th. Any of these days, the sacrifice may be made. Now, a point of caution. If you do want to sacrifice an animal, then you should avoid trimming your nails and cutting or clipping your hair or shaving your hair. Avoid it to show respect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Avoid doing this for the 10 days before the sacrifice. You should pray the Eid prayer. And the Eid prayer is obligatory. It is not just sunnah. It is obligatory on every single Muslim, male or female, on the 10th of Dhul Hijjah. So dear brothers and sisters, don't limit the mercy of Allah upon you. Don't limit the good deeds that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to you. Exert yourself on the day of Arafah in dua. Exert yourself throughout these 10 days in recapturing Ramadan, in the recitation of the Quran, in the remembrance of Allah. Exert yourself in Sadaqah. Give charity. Again, every single day of the 10 days, give charity ta'ala and push yourself to give charity. And then offer a sacrifice if you can and find joy with your family ta'ala. Connect with long lost relatives inshallah ta'ala or the relatives and loved ones of those that you have lost. Here's the problem. A lot of us think about the time that we spend with family as taking a break from our worship. Whereas it's the greatest that you could do in terms of worship subhanAllah on that day is Silatul Rahim is connecting with the ties of the womb. And Silatul Rahim does not just refer to your immediate family, though that is who is immediately implied, okay, and included. So your parents, if they're alive, if they're not alive, maybe you give sadaqah on their behalf, you call their friends, you call their relatives. That's one of the ibadat that the Prophet ﷺ taught us to maintain the ties with the loved ones of our deceased loved ones. Who would your parents typically have called if they were alive, if they were still with you this Eid? You call them instead and say, you know, I know that my mother, and my father used to keep up with you on the day of Eid. Send them something, greet them, whatever it may be. And bi-idnillahi ta'ala, that will all be a form of blessing. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept these 10 days from all of us 